Dying Light 2, brand new gameplay just dropped. Oh, that's right, baby, the YouTube people's champ, J-Rock, is here. Come on back, because you know we got to do the damn thing. Highly, J-Rock has come back to you, too. What is happening with the millions and millions? J Rock fans from all over the world. Oh, that's right, baby. J Rock is here. And we're about to check out this Dying Light 2 gameplay. A game that I'm definitely looking forward to. Don't just. Oh, or did this get. This got delayed, if I'm not mistaken, to February. To the first quarter of next year, if I'm not mistaken. It was supposed to drop in December, but I think it got delayed to February, if I'm not mistaken. All right. I just hope this don't turn out to be another cyberpunk fiasco. Right? Um, I hope the game is. Damn, they're finished and polished, about to go gold. Um, yeah, I haven't heard an announcement that it's going to go yet. Usually, it, it may not get an announcement to that till around maybe December or January, if it don't get delayed again, because this game has been delayed for a long time. But anyway, without wasting no more time, let's check this thing. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I am Alex Stadnick, and I am joined by the one and only Brian Shea. Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going, Alex? It is so good because the hype train just keeps rolling. The last couple weeks have been amazing because this week we're talking f***ing Dying Light 2. Yeah, so I got to go to a media event. My first, like, in-person media event since February 2020. Wow. That's, that's wild. Was it good? Did you enjoy it? It was super cool and like the the venue was pretty nice and it was like set up really awesome with like a bunch of pcs and, and ps4 stations so you can actually see that it plays well on old gen consoles as well because you know we've seen certain new gen games that also release Damn, on old, old consoles are actually some that even just release on the old consoles and they run like an n64 game so they kind of wanted to make sure that they got out ahead of this that yes it runs very well on the old consoles as well and then, Good to so know. the PC stations were kind of set up as the next-gen slash PC example then? It seemed like it, yeah. So it was a pretty high-end PC that I was playing on, and that's the, uh, the footage that you're seeing here. But uh, I did, I, so I, I played the PC version for, I want to say, like three or four hours. Okay. And then I played about 30 minutes of, or 20 or 30 minutes of the PS4 Pro version. Okay, cool. So you got a nice comparison there. So I guess... Let's, let's not beat around the bush. What did you think? This game is real, contrary to what some people would think. Uh, and it sounds like it was fun, right? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, actually. Like, I loved the first Dying Light. It was the second game I ever reviewed for Game Informer. So way back in early 2015, that was, like, the second game I ever reviewed. That game was and a lot of fun. I had a really great time with it. But it was one of those games where I was like, this game is going to be so much better like when they take like some of the lessons they learned from this and it seems like they did take all those lessons and carry it into dying light 2 so like obviously one of the big selling points for dying light 2 is your choices matter and i saw that in full force with uh my demo i can't really give a ton of spoilers and i don't think much of our audience wants to hear a ton of spoilers but like there are like factions that you can befriend so there's the peacekeepers and the survivors oh. uh, and there's also some other factions I don't know if I'm allowed to mention them though uh, but I, I talked to a few different other ones and you can basically oh. shift the alignment of the entire city based on choices that you make so I was uh, befriending the survivors for much of my playthrough um, and they're kind of just like the ragtag group that is just trying to like you know as the name implies survive uh, whereas the peacekeepers are kind of like this militaristic faction like uh, they're almost like militarized security that goes around the town and they're like we need to uh, keep the city safe through like brute force and, and weaponry and stuff like that and based on how you uh, choose to uh, as, like play through the missions and like uh, explore the open world and take part in side content you can actually shift the alignment and based on what parts of the city are aligned to what factions you'll unlock different perks so when i hmm. shifted the alignment of part of the city to the survivors it gave me more zip lines like they set up a bunch of zip lines so they could traverse across the rooftops uh without going down the streets where the zombies are nice before it was shifted to that of the peacekeepers there's different traps that pop up on the ground so you can actually do better uh in like combat situations against the zombies so 
uh, cool stuff like that. And then also, obviously, there's a lot of other... Like, Can you say multiple playthroughs? I, I didn't see anything as, like, a big of, like, a tectonic shift as I saw the E3 2019 demo, where, like, based on what side you... You, uh, or what faction you side with, they like it, like the map will change like completely, like in terms of like the, the water draining and like a whole new area to explore. I didn't see anything like that in my playthrough, but definitely it's like choices matter. And talking with uh, the team, I was asking them, like, oh, what if I did this? And they're like, well, if you went this different route, like these main characters in my story might have just been more minor characters and they might have even, might have even been enemies, which it's like, wow, the, the, this one character was like seem like a like a best friend or even possibly like uh like a main like quest giver and it's like that character might have been an enemy in if i went a different route and it's just wild to think that like it seems like there's just like so many different storylines you can navigate through well and especially too because rosario dawson's in this game like they're they, they have oh names attached to this is she now that they would Change, uh, huh. change their story uh, you know, accordingly. That's, that, I mean, that's exciting, though. I'm, I'm here so, for it. I got uh, two huh. regions. There's, there's two regions that I got to play. Uh, that's cool. There more. That's there cool. Two there were two regions in the original base game. But okay. I saw that's two cool. That actually reflected okay. two regions of the original game. I, I mean, I'm buying the game anyway. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, like shambly assembled uh, air, like buildings with like maybe one or two stories then you went to old town which was like three or four stories. she's so damn stories. fine and boy good starts, lord uh, in uh old villador which is kind of like uh, a more like residential area with lots of like smaller settlements but then i went to central loop like i kind of jumped forward and that's where i met lawan which is rosario dawson's character and she gave me uh like a like a hang glider or uh i forget what the exact terminology they used was but it was like i could uh I could like glide around the city and there's like air vents that will shoot you up so you can traverse uh, like huge distances without having to worry about like going down the streets or finding a zip line or stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like she seems like she's going to be a pretty central character. Uh, her performance was great from what I saw. Um, and yeah, like I'm, I'm excited to, to see where her story goes. I don't know if like they're going to make it so like you can't interact with her. Uh, very much like I'm sure like there's ways like but it seems like she's going to be like a main thread of the story based on what I saw for sure so uh, getting back to the gameplay a little bit you know Dying Light made its name for being kind of like having that mirror's edge level of parkour you know with, with gunplay and, and combat that was solid right but still had a little bit of, of jank to it at least when it came out right like how does this feel to finally actually get your hands on and play Oh, it feels so good. And after I saw the E3 2019 demo, I got so hyped on this game that I went back and replayed Dying Light 1. And you're right, there's a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, jank. Like, you know, like there's certain things where it's like I would try to climb a, a ledge and it wouldn't go to the, the area that I was I thought I was looking at. Because the way it works is you look at a ledge and then you press the right bumper and you'll jump up and grab the ledge that you're looking at. And it works a decent amount of the time in the first one. Uh, the second one, it feels much more precise. Good. definitely still feels like they're i mean and they rebuilt the system from the ground up but hmm. it feels very much uh true to the original system but there's like so many more animations so many more moves that you can do uh i like i mentioned I, I there's like different tools that you can use to traverse so you can like kind of hang glide over to a place or you can uh use like a grappling hook uh and i didn't get to use that unfortunately but it looks super fun and then uh, I unlocked like a wall run, so I could jump, like jump wall run, and go over a little bit of Titanfall two action. Oh, now you're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah. And like you can like ride on the doors, so like if there's like a door, you can like jump over, grab the door, and like kind of swing around and use its momentum, and like you know you can huh. swing from bars, uh, you know, kind of like Uncharted style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very cool. uh, yeah, but like it feels great, and I think combat also feels really awesome. Um, it. Has it, it feels much more reactive in terms of like when you hit a part of the zombie's body, it reacts based on where you're hitting more so than it did in the first game. Uh, and the weapons feel a whole lot more satisfying. The ragdoll physics are okay, so they got caught up on that thing. Like Hope they get that like, I had like a two handed mace and I wound up and like I basically like I felt like I was playing that golf game because I just swung it and the zombie <laughs> went flying off like the roof. And I was like, this is awesome, that's incredible, very nice. So uh, you know, this game is, is slated for early next year, February, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, did you get a sense playing it? Because it sounds like everything was playing well. Like, 
but was the build solid or did it feel like this needed a little bit more time to cook like that kind of stuff this day and age in gaming it's always going to be you know patches after launch or day one patches and stuff like that but <clears throat> the, the build that i played was very solid and it ran very smooth like there i mean it, the pc version was running uh 60 frames per second nice um and got to add really 60 great, fps uh, the ps4 pro version is locked at 30 frames per second from what i understand and you know the textures were uh slightly like lower fidelity and uh it was also like a little bit more pop-in like when like, you're looking off in the distance and you're running because like you know you're moving through the city pretty fast when you're when you're like doing a smooth park four section for sure and it uh yeah, it just, it seems like it's its on the right track, and uh, I think that, like, the reason this kept getting delayed, it, it seems like it was a combination of just wanting to make this the most polished experience possible, while also dealing with, you know, a, a pandemic that upended everybody's lives and work uh, situations. 100%. Viewers, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, be good to one another, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. J-Rock says this. Day one, for sure. I got the first one. May have to go back and replay it, but I'm... I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of a lot of different games right now, but I definitely will be getting this day one. All right. If you got a gaming backlog, meaning if you got games that you got to go back to, you haven't been able to finish like me, like I got right now, I'm playing Far Cry 6 and this is on PS5. I still got Borderlands 3 on Xbox One X that I still haven't finished. Okay. Um... I, I just finished, I got, man, it's just it's so many games, I can't even remember off the top of my head. I'm still, I gotta get through Returnal, I keep dying in that game, and then they got some more games, <laughs> it's a good problem to have for me, uh, but it's just like, damn, it's like, I get in the middle of a game and then another one comes out and I'm like, damn, but I don't want to wait, I want to play it, but this one is a day one, uh, so rest assured I'm going to be playing it. Um, maybe, maybe soon, one day, I don't know, I may do like some live gameplay. Just depends on how many people are tuning in, you know, to watch. You know, I got a busy schedule, so I'm not going to be just playing if just three or four people are watching. I don't mean no harm, but I'm going to need to have some big numbers before I dedicate a considerable amount of the great one's time to that. All right. So, if y'all want to see me play it, you know, gameplay live, not just this, but any games. You know, uh, let me know. Comment down below and let J-Rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. And if you enjoyed the Gravens reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Be sure to hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until next time. Mamba, GG, and Wakanda forever. If you smile, how? What J-Rock? Eat.